Well, I don't know how this is well this is gonna work, but I haven't done a flake online for a while, so I thought I would. Flakes can be a pain, but you make a lot of them, so if you make a bunch of big flakes, you might as well use them or give them to somebody that will use them. The thing that's bad about them is they're all they're all weird shapes a lot of the time, and they have <coughs> they have a lot of concavities in them like this right here. Okay, so this is a really big flake. However, it's fairly thin and this is all a big concavity and so it's flared up over here. So we're not gonna be able to use that. We're looking at making sort of a thin something or another right along in here in the meat of this thing. But you have to be careful with that or you're not gonna have anything left to make a point out of because by the time I get rid of this concavity up to where it's thick enough to undercut all that and shoot across this way, I'm gonna be getting pretty darn narrow in here, particularly since I've got to lose some of this side to get the cortex off and thicken and get into flint. And then I got a bubble percussion here I got to get rid of. So let me start with that stuff. Um, if I break it, I'll start another flake or something. One of the problems with the flakes is they break really easily. And the reason they break easily is they don't have any biconvexity to make them strong. So they just tend to break. Um, I like to bipolar off some of the initial stuff. But there's an art to that too, and you have to do it quite a bit to where you get to where you understand what sort of hitting on that will make the piece break and which stuff won't. See how that popped out? It tends to do a fair amount of weird stuff, so because it's just not super controlled and and what you're bipolaring, you're not setting up platforms and stuff, so. It's best not to do it in too close to where your final point's gonna be. You sort of want your fingers spread out for support, but you don't wanna be holding it tightly because you don't need to hold it tightly. All you're doing is dampening shock. I don't know if that's a little crack there or just the nodule didn't form perfectly when it formed in the chalk. So, um, the other thing is, as you start coming in with this stuff, remember to figure out which way you're gonna be shooting back. So like on this, when I come in and do this, I can start out going down this way if I want to, but at some point I'm gonna to wanna to flip it and go down this way so I get my bevel turned back to come across here. Um, <clears throat> and on this one, <clears throat> I'm going to be wanting to go down this way when I get in close. But until that time, when I want to get some of this beveled off, I may want to come this way. So anyway, you just flip it however you need it. Um, if you angle it downward a little bit and come in at a slight angle, it's way safer. Like doing that, it also creates a really good platform to go back the other way if that's what you're wanting to do at a given point. I, I want to normally get all the thin edges, all the knife edges off the thing before I start hitting hard anywhere. The reason for that is knife edges are just a real good place always for lateral cracks to start that just go over and cut your piece in half. Now, even though I want to get rid of all this, I, you don't do this too quickly. I mean, you don't try and do too much at once. You hit in here, you're going to break the piece in half. Okay, there's another uh, weird failure. And again, you know, I'm hitting up on top of this thing, so you're very possible to have that. But as long as it doesn't run that way, I don't care.
Okay, now at any point in here, if you want to use a shearing tool to straighten an edge some or whatever, you can do that when it's thin. So um, <clears throat> if I wanted to, which I don't right now, but if I wanted to, I could start shearing right in here. I'm angling it a little bit in that way, so I'm not coming straight down on top of the edge that could be as likely to start. And I'm rolling into the edge, so I don't, not as likely to start a, a, a lateral crack. But you can, I wonder if that'll focus. Probably not. You can see it's doing something there. But I really wasn't ready for that yet because it's not really labor effective to start trying to do a lot of this so early on. The shearing is something that I haven't shown enough though. I've underutilized it on video. Um, it's a really good technique and for that reason it tends to be used a whole lot by some people. Okay, if you wanted to, you could try doing some of this bipolar stuff with copper too on a rock. I like to have sort of a hard point or a high point on a rock. This is almost like shearing in a way because, you know, you just hit slightly to the side of your high point, which is supporting right like under here, and it just cuts it off. I may have been a little ambitious and over ambitious in doing this. It's so thin right there and it's all chalk, you know, you might want to say, well, I want to save every last bit of length. Well, you can't on this. So you're just spitting in the wind if you think you're gonna. This is bowed a little. So if you notice, I'm gonna lose maybe to here and to here. The point that's actually in this is not very big. It may be about that long and maybe about that wide. And for many people, it might not be possible for them to really reduce this flake in an effective manner anyway. It might not be an okay flake depending upon your skill level and what you're willing to, how much effort you're willing to go to to get you a little point. I'm being more careful than it looks like because until you do this a lot, you definitely tend to break them. But if you sat there and tried to pressure flake off all that stuff or, or bop it all off with your hand, I mean, it could just take semi forever. And you can do it, but. turning this way down. And yes, I'm hitting on the top, but I'm supporting underneath my finger. And regardless, it's pretty hazardous to the health of the preform or the plate. I don't know what you call this. Is it a biface? Not yet. So I'm sitting here knocking on this and that's so dangerous. Let me go ahead. You don't want to stiffen up these edges too much at this stage. Because if you make them, you don't want to make things very strong while you're still trying to get it off. But a little bit of back and forth with a fine abrader might keep your piece together when you go to trying to bang on it. I don't want to over strengthen this either, but I'm just trying to go to Okay, you might wonder why I choose something this big. Here's the problem. What I have found is that if you don't use the same length bopper all the time, you tend to have problems switching back and forth. When you use the same length, it, uh, you can go back and forth between weight more easily, but the, the length is an issue.
I need to come up with this and then knock down on this and start bringing that in. I really don't need to spend a lot of time trying to do this carefully on getting this off other than not to break the piece because I need to come all the way down to here with beveling flakes in order to straighten this. So there's a lot to be removed. It isn't like the, uh, some of the reductions that you may have seen me do where I'm saving all of this end length. Okay, so I've turned that down and I've got me a, an edge I can hit on like that. So now I'm gonna try and carefully hold this but not, not put any pressure here because that'll fold it. I'm just pinching up here, supporting all back here, but pinching up here and hitting at exactly the right angle to have my concordal flake go straight in and try and cut some straight flakes into here, okay? Bam. I hit downward. I caught too much of it. That's it. Game over. Next flake. Next victim. Okay, so this one doesn't have that same issue. It's got concavities going the other way. It's still very torqued, and there isn't a huge point in here, but there's a point maybe like right in here. Okay, so here we go. By the way, there's two, fl oh, there's two points in that other thing. I wonder if I ought to continue to work on that. Nah. But I can make two points out of it. I think I may make two points at the end of this out of it and post them or something. I do that a lot of time just to punish myself for making mistakes. I force myself to go ahead and work the pieces of the mistake. I need to just quit my freeze craft career My borderline career. If you see me getting smaller, I'm leaving, leaving, don't be leaving. Just got to get away from here. And if you see me getting smaller, don't worry, worry. Ain't no hurry. I got the right to disappear. I'm not aging like fine wine, that's one thing for dang sure. And yes, I do know that a grinder would be much more simple on this. I got way more to lose because this is still nowhere close to straight. This is going to be a, like a little Gary point about that big. Oh yeah. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I should have stuck with my other piece is. Mm. Yeah, see, I still need to leave it loose about that much. But I mean, why throw the rock away? It's good material. I wonder if this will work. 
kind of. like I'm wasting my time. Isolate, isolate. Trying to raise a little bit. Be lucky if we make this work. Cut off a lot of that hump. Where I isolated was bad concavity, so I created a big square edge on here with breaking the piece and how I trimmed it. Made some pretty cool stuff lately, and I thought about doing that show and tell at the beginning of the end, but then I'm like, hey, y'all can look at Instagram and stuff and see what, what I post. I'm trying to keep this stuff not about the glory of freeze crack napping, but more about how to try and nap like you want to to make stuff you want to so I'm always conflicted when I show stuff that I make that for me is semi G whiz I feel like I ought to show the stuff I little crummy stuff I make and common stuff and broke stuff and but I guess a hundred years from now it ain't gonna matter maybe 20 yay it's all about the angle on them so we're 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 getting closer into where the point is. We still have quite a bit to lose. Go ahead and lose some of it. Got my elbow down on my leg. So that this bopper doesn't reach out and grab too much of the edge. When you've got a concavity there and you just start hitting downward and turn that up, you end up with a funcated weird edge that really isn't that good for much. So it's best to not do too much of that before you go back the other direction and straighten it out and keep going. You can make it thick, but you just there's no point in rolling it so hugely. <clears throat> I 
you know, your strategy still becomes one of, do you take the bow out of it from shooting in through the sides on the ends to bring them up? Or do you shoot in from the ends on the ends to bring them up? Which, which way are you gonna lose? You're gonna lose either way. But uh, in this case, like right here, it's still, I mean, I, well, I can probably get away with losing no more than that much and make a real thin pointed something or another. This is one of them stupid videos. Right back.